Why would you need to buy an expensive digital transport for file playback and streaming when you have a computer that seems to be perfect for it? Moreover, audiophile digital players are same crap different bag as computers, just in stylish cases. To answer this question, I decided to compare the sound of such a player with the sound of my wife's computer. Let's jump into it, and by the way, let's talk about why you shouldn't buy cool winter plimsolls. To do everything as honestly as possible, I took the digital transport of the Korean company Orender, which specializes in devices that play digital files with the highest quality. But so that it doesn't look like an unequal battle, I chose their simplest device. Just recently Orender introduced their new music server and streamer N150, which replaced the previous N100, and it seems that nothing has changed at all. Well, you won't see anything new from the outside. So, what are they doing there if there is no change? Are audio files being swindled again? Before we tackle this, let's look at the opponent. This is a great modern computer, MacBook Air with M1 processor. Unlike Orender, it allows my wife for doing three important things. First, spending hours on Facebook reading mom's complaining about how bad social media influences their kids. Second, spending money online. And third, checking if her husband said another nasty thing about her on YouTube. Orender still far from that. MacBook Air is a very quiet computer, it has no active cooling. In addition, I used it running solely on batteries to avoid noise from the mains and from the power supply. We're in paranoid mode now. I used the standard Tidal app as a player. The sound was output via USB to an external DAC, so the conversion to analog was done outside. At the same time, N150 is a pure digital transport. It doesn't have a built-in browser, there is no digital to analog converter on board, and just like a computer, it sends sound via USB to an external converter. In fact, N150 is also a computer, it runs on Linux, but its circuits are designed specifically and exclusively for one single task of playing music. If we are all familiar with conventional computers, then it's worth getting to know Orender better. This is a small but heavy body, 11.7 pounds, made of thick aluminum bars. Its front panel is half an inch thick. This is made for you to literally feel what are you paying for and for external interference doesn't penetrate into its sensitive circuits. Everything is pretty familiar for devices of this brand on the front panel. A power button with a pale blue backlight, a central 3-inch AMOLED display, three playback control buttons and one button that changes display modes, nothing else. The silence of precision machined aluminum and tactile pleasures. Speaking of the display, as you can see, it's small and it seems to be the same display that N100 had, in fact, like the entire facade. I don't know why they do this to us, but the screen doesn't display album covers, but only textual information and the playback progress bar, readable even from afar, I must say. A computer with its retina display and bright album covers looks like God's grace. However, from the sofa you can no longer read what's playing now and the progress bar seems deceptive. The computer requires close contact. The rear panel of this Orender is modest but reliable. You will see a gigabit Ethernet connector, and this is the only way to connect it to the network. Orender doesn't recognize Wi-Fi and all these wireless transmission protocols. Then there are two USB-A ports for connecting external drives. They work only for input. And a third audiophile USB, which has an ultra-low noise power circuit designed exclusively 
to output a digital stream with the highest possible quality. And here you'll find a mechanical toggle switch for physical de-energizing of the device, since the power button on the front panel is actually a digital one. And you'll find another notable thing here, a 2.5 inch hard drive slot that wasn't there in the last generation. I have a 2TB hard drive installed, but you can put an SSD in there. And you should know that in addition to this drive, it has another one inside, a non-removable 240 gigs SSD drive, which is used for caching. Well, now let's look inside, it's worth it! All Orenders are extremely pleasant inside, just look how gorgeous it is! An excellent linear power supply with a toroidal transformer that provides clean and stable power to its circuits. And you can see the big blue battery of its UPS. This thing will allow this Orender for staying for a few of the most critical minutes, allowing it to safely and automatically shut down all the processes and shoot the power down in case of a blackout. So it won't lose anything and won't kill the hard drive in a critical situation. The previous model N100 didn't have this either. How does it work? Unlike a computer, which will directly send a stream to USB throughout the Tidal application, Orender isn't so simple. Everything that you will play will first be loaded onto the built-in caching SSD, from which playback begins. This is necessary to get rid of lags during playback and to avoid broadcasting the noise from transmitting circuits, for example, uh, the noise of your local network. And even when you play files from its hard drive, not the caching one, but the one that is inserted from the back. The device will first transfer the file to the caching SSD, turn off that source hard drive so it doesn't create unnecessary noise, and after that it will start playing. This takes about a second or two, so you won't even notice the trick. It always tries to turn off everything that isn't used at the moment. This is part of its philosophy to try to clear your path as much as possible. The computer at this time will emit everything possible with its countless wireless transmitters, will make noise with its components that aren't used in sound reproduction, will take resources from the player for secondary background tasks and all that, because it doesn't have priority to give a obsessively cleared signal via USB. Orender is entirely subordinated to one process and it is controlled by its proprietary application, which is an absolute benchmark for two reasons. First, it allows you to interact with Orender at any level from amateur to advanced. Everything is very conveniently organized here and for those who are afraid of computers, you can directly communicate with the support in the application and they'll be able to fix any of your issues remotely. The second reason is the way playback is organized. You just move tracks, files or albums into one playlist. In fact, you are instructing to copy everything you need to its caching SSD. And thanks to this, you can combine all that into one common playlist. The files from streaming, it supports Tidal and Kobos, the files from its drive or from the local network. And it will play all this seamlessly, so that it will all sound like one source for you, and it's super convenient. And here's another sketch from the future. You can buy an add-on that allows it to decode MQA right in the application. Yes, the audio file player has enough purchases. Wow! So, I decided to compare how Tidal would sound served by a laptop and Orender to the same DAC. At first, I used a discrete precision resistor R2R high-end DAC by Leslos. But to make the comparison even closer to reality, after all, not every one of us has a high-end DAC. I don't have one either. Therefore, I decided to do it brutally. I used the DAC that is built into my preamp, the Parasound P5. This DAC is good, but it isn't the best though. Will it make any difference at all? Here's what I heard. Jean Benoit Dunkel, half of the French electro duo Air, has recently released their new solo album. 
he has created something that on the one hand sounds like another smart and sleepy air album, but on the other hand it's a completely different kind of electronic music, similar to the soundtrack of an exciting vintage sci-fi movie. From the first seconds it's able to take you somewhere far away in space and time, but where exactly it will take you depends upon what you listen to it on. MacBook reveals enough detail so you can feel the beauty and complexity of every single sound. Everything is drawn quite clearly, there is a sense of space, atmosphere and basically I couldn't note anything that I would complain about. It sounds really great, what else do you need? I couldn't complain about that sound until I started listening to Orander. This little device instantly shows what it's made for. The sound just gets bigger, the stage expands in all directions. The MacBook sounds more cramped in comparison, with the peripherals mostly missing, the images are revealed closer to the central point, they are feeling more shrunk, uh, that's why you don't feel the same precise localization of each sound that uh, this Orender gives you. But the most remarkable thing is that Orender sound is cleaner, it's just more refined in a good way. You can't feel this difference in dead pauses since computers simply don't send anything in such moments. But in some moments of playing you understand that Orender very clearly conveyed some kind of background sound which is heard rather abstractly from the computer. This is due to the fact that there is simply no low-level audio garbage which degrades the signal transmission quality and increases jitter. Yes, this is such audiophilia and catching seemingly subtle differences of course. However, all these differences in small things eventually add up to something more. You listen to the same track from the computer and from N150 and got a completely different ultimate quality of music enjoyment. The basis of this is that Orender is much quieter and cleaner throughout its entire path. As a result, you cut a legit detail here, then something flew in there, something impressed here and everything like that. MacBook doesn't do everything as clearly and precisely and not everything impresses you as well. If French Electronica disgusts you, then Canadian post-hardcore is always ready to help. Alexis on Fire recorded their first album within 13 years. You'll love it if it you're still wearing cons and find the sound of two Catholic high school girls in the middle of a knife fight melodic. I didn't come up with this, this is how the musicians themselves describe their music. I won't shame your obtuse wishes, who doesn't have them? The main thing, don't overdo it with jumping around the apartment, this already belongs to our children. A grey-haired man in tattered chucks slightly shaking his head to a strange emo yelling is already quite extreme in itself. You know, a couple of years ago I discovered that Converse made insulated winter sneakers and bought these for myself without noticing the catch right away. The premonition that I would roam the snow in style in the chucks was simply wigging out. Enlightenment comes on the street. You suddenly realize that in this way Converse achieves one of the goals. Either they want to train your vestibular system or they are simply clearing out the world of young-like old farts. Their soles are absolutely not designed for winter, they are smooth and slippery, so you have to take your steps very carefully, because if something goes wrong, and it would, believe me, then you may instantly take a horizontal position. Everything would be fine, but when falling, one of our few unpaired body parts can suffer. I'm talking about the head now. Ok, back to the music. Alexis on Fire shows even more than a good player matters. The computer is simply not able to transmit noisy, intense music as well. The dead silence of the Orender tract reflects that you hear each guitar separately. Not some kind of guitar noise as shown by MacBook. This is a huge and critical difference for me. And it becomes even more noticeable when you listen to high res. 
Another amazing new album that you should listen to comes from the veterans of the British prog rock scene, Porcupine Tree. Steven Wilson and mates were recording it in complete secrecy for about 10 years. This album is recorded in very high resolution and you can feel even more difference, immerse yourself in their sound even deeper. You will hear that Orander is a cut above not only in resolution, but also in dynamics, and it depicts the idea much more accurately and on a large scale resulting in a much more contrasting, dramatic picture. Here is a small example. On Red's Return song there is a female part on backing vocals. From a MacBook you hear it all quite clearly, but in a rather flat plane. But Orander shows that this female voice is floating around. And these kind of things happen everywhere. About using expensive and cheap decks. Of course, on a more expensive one you hear more and better, but at the same time you hear more truth, the disadvantages of MacBook become even more pronounced. On my preamps deck the difference isn't that big, but it's still there and it's critical for serious, thoughtful listening. You simply lose a lot of the subtle nuances that make the sound richer and more exciting when listening from a computer. Is it important to keep it or not, everyone decides for himself. But one thing is undeniable. If we want to listen without amplifications, then a player like N150 will allow you for doing it on a way higher level than a computer without any doubt.